There are so many distractions in life, but God has given me more purpose. For me, more means doing less, but doing exactly what God wants me to do. God bless you today, my friends, as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ together. First Baptist, it's the Encouraging Word for December the 22nd, 2013. Join us as our service has already begun. is come. Would you stand as we sing together?
Fear not, the angel said, Behold, the Messiah has come, the one of whom you read. And as they spoke to men that day, the heavenly hosts around the throne joined in to say, Angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. And still today the wise men come, offering their praise to God's anointed one. They spoke, their heart fell love. This glorious sound was on my ear from up above. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest, glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. On earth, good wills to win. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little, little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, good will to win. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. pumping I think it's pumping now I know it's Steve's is I think he worked up a sweat singing that one didn't you yes yes well Merry Christmas Merry Christmas as a family here at First Baptist we welcome you here today whether you're part of our family or maybe you're coming to visit family we just welcome you into the Lord's house this morning what an awesome privilege we have to celebrate the Christ of Christmas today. And you know what? I don't know where you're at in your life or what's going on or what sadness or sickness or joys that you're experiencing. But today, of all days, we have the privilege to celebrate the Christ of Christmas. And I hope that this Christmas season is like no other Christmas for you, that you do experience Christ in a new and a fresh way. And we're here to celebrate that today. And Steve, we have a family that is celebrating today. There's a child that has changed their family as well. Lee and Betsy Call just had a new baby girl, Kelsey. And I know that they're celebrating. But you know what? The greatest thing that we celebrate today is that there was a little child that God sent, Christ Jesus, into a little manger so long ago that he today is still changing people's lives forever. And that's what we're here to celebrate, that even today, after all these years, no one has had so much influence as Christ. And if you'll join us now as we continue to celebrate Christ at Christmas. Merry Christmas.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you today, we thank you for the opportunity we have to celebrate you, that you are our all in all. And Lord, as you gave your son, Jesus, to be the perfect gift and the perfect offering on our behalf, Lord, today we come before you with our tithes and offerings and ask that you would bless them and that you would multiply them and that you would be, continue just to change lives as only you can do. Lord, we give this time, we give all that we have to you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah. 
Jim and orchestra, praise team. Thank you for that wonderful time of worship together and Steve Woodard. Tonight, that's one of the songs that we're going to sing, and there will be several others. Our program tonight is about, about an hour long, and uh, we want you to be here. It's going to be a very special time where we've asked our Genesis worship family to come across the street, join with this orchestra, and our praise team and our soloists, and it's going to be a wonderful night beginning at 7 o'clock. I hope that you're here. Be praying for all of heaven to fall down because I think it's going to happen. And we need you here, our largest choir, because it's a night of worship, and we want you to sing with us and rejoice and to praise and pray tonight with us as we worship this one who came and identified with each and every one of us and was born in a lowly stable, a place where the animals ate that hay, our sweet little Jesus boy. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, didn't know who you was. Didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. was blind we could not see we didn't know who you was long time ago you was born born in a manger Sweet little Jesus boy, the world treat you mean, Lord, oh, and they treat me mean too, but that's how things is down here, we don't know who told us how and we we is a trying master you you done showed us how even when you dying just seems like we can't do right look how it treated you, but please, sir, forgive us, Lord. We didn't know it was you. blessed Christmas to each one of you. I love you so much. And what a wonderful time of the year this is. And I just joined together with all of us 
And on behalf of our chairman of deacons, Jeff Rosalind, and all our church family, we, we want to say to you, have a very blessed Christmas, and the Lord shine through you and bless you in every regard. I love Christmas time. You know, I really am looking forward to that new boat that someone's going to give me, and definitely the new motor car that uh, I know is God's going to put that on someone's heart, and, uh, and, and that new and, and that big. And, but you know, sometimes Christmas presents to you really an uncomplicated joy in a small package. And so I, my wife and I went to the Mike Swaim and David Holiday Christmas party the other night. We had the best time ever. They gave me a gift, and I was just so touched. So I thought I would show you what people in our church gave their pastor. It's a bobblehead. <laughs> and how they got it to look like me, I don't know, but it does. And uh, I thought I'd let him preach today. <laughs> but you know, it just makes me think of how... What was that? It just makes me think of how really uncomplicated Christmas is. But now I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'm going to leave him there just for a minute. I, I'm going to tell you. I said just for a minute. I'm going to tell you, if you... <laughs> I'm going to tell you, if you want to know what an uncomplicated Christmas is all about, do what I did the last couple of weeks. I just went and spoke to some of our children. And I just want you to know if you want to really understand that Christmas really is uncomplicated. Just watch this with me. Where was Jesus born? In a manger. In a manger. Where? In Bethlehem. Where? In a stable. Ah, in a stable. Who lives in a stable? Jesus. Animals. Animals. And so it would be nice to have something that was really nice to smell. Mm -hmm. Maybe like potpourri or something, eh? <laughs> Which is better, being born in a stable or being born in a hospital? Yes. Hospital. Why? Because you want to be born in a hospital. <laughs> Would you like to be born in a stable? Hospital. In a hospital. Where would you like to be born? Uh, a stable. A stable? Why? Because you. I get... like the animals with me. You like the animals with you. And they with me. But there are lots of animals in the hospital with you too. <laughs> They're not animals in the hospital? No! There would be other but people, animals. but not animals. They're not dogs and cats and things in the hospital? That's a vet. <laughs> oh, that's a vet. I got that mixed up. You so know, how many of you would you like... Do you know anything in the world? <laughs> what? <laughs> <I'll be laughs> no. I'm very happy that you are bringing me up to date, young man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, let me let me just tell you this. I'm I'm just this is a time for confession and and I got to get this all out of my system. We did several of these. I'm just showing you a little bit. Of, we've posted online to our web page some of these things. You need to go to our web page and see the bigger package. I promise you some of it is hilarious. But I, one thing we do need around here, around this little sweet little Jesus boy, is we need a little bit of wisdom from the wise men. So listen to this. What three things did the wise men bring to Jesus? Yes. Gold. Gold? But there were three things. Gold, silver. Gold, silver? And... You forgot. Gold, silver, and silver. 
and silver. What about frankincense and myrrh? Frankincense and myrrh? Myrrh? How about mermaids? Listen, did the wise men bring Jesus mermaids? No. Yes. No. How would they bring mermaids? Fish. They would Fish? Yes. They would carry them in a cage? Oh, no, I then see. They be, then they wouldn't be able to breathe. And mermaids aren't real. Mermaids are not real. Okay, here's a big one. Are you ready? I believe in mermaids. Yes, yes. So what three things did the wise men bring to Jesus? Yes. Frankincense. And? Gold. Gold and? Myrrh. Myrrh. What's myrrh? Huh? Myrrh? <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I don't know either. What were the three things that the wise men brought to Jesus? Can you remember what they were? Yes. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You got it. What is myrrh? <coughs> uh, like silver stuff. Okay, do you think maybe it smelled nice? Yeah. Huh? You think it had a nice smell to it? With perfume? Yes. <laughs> All right, let's give our children a big hand, shall we? I'm telling you, I just, I love them. You know, we had, we had more fun than you can, part. well, you can. Just imagine. I, you wouldn't believe what one of those little kids said to me, because one of the questions I asked them is, how old is Santa? Now, you need to ask that question. How old is Santa? You'd be surprised what they told me, but the bottom line was, they obviously, that Santa is old like me, and one of them turned to me and said, you're old. And by the way, there's a grandmother out here. I need to meet you because you're only 50 and you're old too because they said it. And I also want you to know that there's a daddy sitting out here somewhere. Your granddaughter, your daughter said to me, answering a question, that she paints your toenails with nail polish. So what I did was I held all this out. I said, we are not going on public television with something like that because there is a man here whose reputation. So I'm going to ask everybody to bow their heads, and if you need to leave, now's a good time to go. <laughs> Christmas is not complicated. I want you to open your Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 1. Let's all open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. While you're doing that, I hope that you're going to join us tonight. I actually just came a minute ago from Genesis. That place is packed out. We've got two congregations meeting right now, and Genesis over the road packed out, led by the Genesis team, Jared Espy, uh, the giftedness of Jay Arrington and that whole team uh, together. The worship is phenomenal. I am so excited about tonight. Tonight is going to be completely different. It's going to be an hour of phenomenal worship, incorporating our Genesis team together with us right here at 7 o'clock tonight. And, and I want to encourage you to come. And, and to bring your friends. We have loved Christmas on Main and the story of Christmas. And tonight at 7 o'clock, we're going to gather here, and for one hour, we are going to have a worship experience together. So I want to personally invite you to come, bring your friends and loved ones. And uh, let's be reminded that Christmas is not complicated. Matthew chapter 1, this is what the Bible says in verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed. And that word, by the way, means that Mary had been promised to Joseph. Much like we use the word engagement. You know, you fall in love with someone and then you propose and uh, the young lady, God willing, accepts, and don't we love those pictures uh, that we get uh, of, of some young man running around and finding a special place, and 
suddenly here comes the ring, and it's very romantic, and it's a wonderful experience. And, and that ring is put on her finger, and it becomes a symbol of betrothment. Well, back in these days, they didn't quite do it like that. They didn't go to the local jewelers and find a diamond ring or a band of some kind and propose like we do. It was, there was all kinds of intricacies. Families were involved, and it was very binding. Now, folks, I want you to remember this. It was a binding betrothal. You didn't break off a betrothment because your whole family honor was bound in it. Reputation and honor and relationship. So that little word there is very important, that she was betrothed. It means that legally, according to the law of the land, she was legally bound to Joseph, but they were not yet married. They were not yet married. So let me read that again. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph... Son of David. And incidentally, that little phrase is very important. I'm not preaching on that today. But that phrase there, Joseph, son of David, because the prophets told us that Jesus would be born of the line of David. So here we are in the story. Our whole church is going through the story together. And while I'm not particularly preaching on David today, we are right in the section in the Old Testament where we are learning incredible things about David. In fact, next week, the message God's put on my heart concerning David is phenomenal. You don't want to miss next week. Because David sinned, and I get asked all the time, all the time by people, what happens to me now that I've sinned against God. I'll guarantee you there is at least one person worshiping the Lord today that is watching, that is listening, that is worshiping God and something went down with you. In your marriage, in your relationship, you just sinned against God. Is it over? Do you need to be run out of town? Can you ever come back? Is there any hope? Are you ruined for life? And if you've got a friend that you know needs to be here next week, you need to bring them. I'm going to be speaking about new beginnings. So when I look at that little statement there, that she was betrothed to Joseph, and that Joseph was a son of David. I want you to just think about this. He was of the same lineage in God's story as King David, who was the boy shepherd David, who now is Christ Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem, Who is me? Because Christ comes to live in me. When I'm faced with everything in life, it's actually not complicated. I can go to Jesus. I must go to Jesus. Because he is king. And watch how this unfolds here. She will, verse 21, this is what the angel said. She will bear a son. You will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. And all this took place 
to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Line and lineage of David, Jesus who is God, through his death and glorious resurrection, the man Christ Jesus became sin for us, even though he himself knew no sin. You watching? You listening? God with us. It's not over. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angels of the Lord commanded him, and he took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and they called his name Jesus. So much in life has become so complicated, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, I'm sure that people in every generation would, would say that. Politics has become really complicated, especially in America. It's complicated. I mean, they're already talking about who's going to run and who's going to this three years from now for president of the United States. It's just so complicated. Washington is complicated. Culture has become complicated. Everything is complicated. Health issues have become complicated. Marriage can be very complicated. If it wasn't, you and I wouldn't encounter so many issues and struggles. Bringing up children in today's world, complicated. You don't just fall out of bed and say, whoop de doo I'll just bring up the children. It's complicated. Sport is complicated. It's complicated to know whether your kids should be in church or whether they should be practicing for a ball team or going to band practice. It's complicated. But not so Christmas. Not so Christmas. Christmas is not complicated. And, and I'm going to give you just four very simple reasons why you and I have got every reason to thank God for the Lord Jesus at Christmas time. Number one, Christmas is not complicated because it tells us about a loving God. You know, I have a son and a beautiful daughter-in-law and three exceptionally wonderful little grandsons who live on the other side of the world. They are very far away from here. So this is our first Christmas where our family is separated by thousands of miles. So I had a chat with my son the other day, and one of the things that he said to me was, Dad, we miss you all so much, especially at Christmas. He said, but you cannot imagine what it's like to live in a land where nobody knows about Christmas. There are no jingle bells. There's nothing. Todd and Jennifer are in the same position, and we could go on and on. I can't wait in just a minute to have a wonderful time of prayer for Bill and Christine Morris, two incredible people, saying yes to the Lord, going to go overseas. They're going into a land, sure, you'll find it here and there. You see, folks, what's missing in countries where Christmas is not is the fact that Christmas tells us about a loving God. God loves you. If someone were to come up to me and say to me, well, Don, what, what, what's Christmas? Well, it's about a loving God. For God so loved the world. Did you know that God loves you? He really does. 
loving God, creator, redeemer, savior of the world. But number two, it tells us about an historical fact. Christmas is not complicated because it tells us about an historical fact. Do you know that all the major religions of the world, let me just run this by again in case some of you missed it, all the major religions of the world do not dispute the fact that Jesus came to this earth and that he was crucified, that he lived a life. That is a fact of history. That's why even in the Quran, Jesus is listed. Did you know that Muslims respect Jesus? Because he is an historical fact. They do not regard him as the Son of God. Neither do they regard him as Redeemer, and most certainly not as Messiah, but they regard him as some great prophet, the last of which is Muhammad, their prophet. Christmas is not complicated. It tells us about a loving God, and it tells us about an historical fact. In a couple of weeks' time, I'm taking a group of our folks. We're going to stand <clears throat> in places of history. In fact, the first two nights that we will be over there, we are staying in Bethlehem. First time I've ever done this in over 20 trips over there. We are actually going to spend the first two nights in Bethlehem. I can hardly wait. <clears throat> Historical Bethlehem. Yeah, we're going to go to the actual place where the shepherds came, where the manger was, where Jesus was born. We're going to look down toward Nazareth, from whence came his mother and father. I'm taking our people to the land of Abraham for the first time ever. I'm going to take our people to where Abraham went, the big trees of Mamre, where God spoke to him, where Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are buried. <clears throat> The Romans, King Herod was not some kind of mystical figure. We're talking about historical fact. Christmas is really not complicated because it tells us about a loving God and about an historical fact, but it also tells us about a wonderful event. Christmas is about an event. It's about the birth of Jesus. It's, a, it's really a beautiful event. I, I love it when we hear of couples in our church that have been blessed with a child. You know, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a blessed thing. <clears throat> and uh, we've all gone through those experiences. Children, grandchildren, we brag to each other. The birth of a baby is a, is a very precious thing. That's what this is. It's really not complicated. <laughs> it's about a group of shepherds watching over their flocks at night, getting scared half to death on a dark hillside on the outskirts of Bethlehem, in the foothills of Jerusalem. It's about angels, about wise men. It, t it tells us about a wonderful event. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Don't, don't make Christmas complicated. Don't, don't spend your life trying to figure it all out. 
Don't, don't get so caught up in, <clears throat> in theology that you lose the awe of who Jesus is. Don't get so bound by your way of seeing things. Christmas is not complicated. It tells us about a loving God. God loves me and He loves you. He gave to us Jesus. Jesus loves you so much He was born, He lived, and He died. Took your sin and my sin upon Himself. And by the power of God, He was raised from the dead. That's not complicated. It tells us about a loving God. It tells us about an historical fact. Nobody disputes that. It tells us about a wonderful event. You know, we have no problem talking about the births of those little ones that we love. That's why we have no problem with this good news. This is great news. Jesus was born. I wrote in my letter to you, gave you a few things you might, and I said, you know, I even hear of mothers who make a happy birthday Jesus cake. That's lovely, man. Do that and bring me some. <laughs> Absolutely, this is Jesus' birthday. You want to get your children into this? Have a happy birthday Jesus party. This is Jesus' birthday. It's the day he was born. <laughs> you know? It's not complicated. And then one more thing. It tells us about a universal hope. It's not complicated because Christmas tells us about a universal hope. Do you know this uncomplicated Christmas story is for everyone? It's for everyone. Nobody is left out. Nobody. In fact, you know, we have a lot of reminders of that in the Bible, because after Jesus rose from the dead and went back to be with God in heaven, it was made known that because of Jesus, there is no separation, there's no difference between male or female, between rich people, poor people, between black people or white people, or Chinese people and Scandinavian people. And folks, if you think of how complicated our world has become, in America today, everybody walks on eggshells. Everybody, because we're so complicated. We've lost our sense of humor, reality, and everybody's just waiting to pounce on somebody to say something. And when they do, they're going to eat their lunch depending on which side of the fence they're on. We have so complicated our world, but when it comes to Jesus, it's not complicated because Christmas tells us about a universal hope, the hope of forgiveness, the hope of a new beginning, the hope of eternal life, and that's for everyone. As I speak to you today, I, I'm speaking God's Word to everyone, not to some few, to everyone, everyone. Someone once said to me, they said, Pastor, what's it really like to preach every Sunday? I said, well, greatest joy of my life, the greatest challenge of my life is the fact that listening to me are, would you like to Write down who actually is listening right now. From the very youngest to the very oldest. The most educated to the least educated. Those who can hear and those who can't hear. Men and women. People of every nationality. Every culture. And you know, instead of me getting all tied up in a knot about who's going to understand me, I've come to understand it's not about understanding me. It's about the uncomplicated joy of Christmas. It's about Jesus. Christmas is not complicated. That's why I want to invite you to give your life to Christ. Steve is going to come and join me here. And we're going to sing a wonderful hymn. And I'm going to invite Eddie in Genesis to come and to join Jared and the team. And I'm going to ask you in Genesis to come and to surrender your life to Christ.
I'm going to ask you today to give your life to Christ. I'm going to ask you to turn your heart over to Him. I'm going to, I'm going to invite you to uncomplicate your life. Let, let this Jesus unravel your life because He's the one that will do it. Let's stand together. You come as we begin to sing this morning. Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. two extremely precious people, Bill and Christine. You come stand with me here for a minute. And uh, by the way, while they're doing that, if you want to just quickly hand your prayer request down to the center aisles uh, so that our men can come by and uh, gather your prayer requests so that we can be praying for you this week. That is a wonderful joy. Hey, Bill, how are you, brother? Hey, Christine. <laughs> I tell you, you know, I, uh, folks, there's a lot of wonderful things uh, that we are partnered with, but I surely cannot imagine a greater joy for us as a congregation and as a people to pray for and to celebrate with and to commend a couple to God's grace. Bill and Christine Morris, who just love the Lord and have been serving the Lord as a pastor and shepherd and minister of the gospel, have, they know that God has tugged at their heartstrings and has called them to go and serve the Lord overseas. And uh, they're going to be going uh, to a faraway place. Am I allowed to say where you're going? I didn't South even ask. Asia. Yeah, they're going to South Asia. Uh, actually, not all that far from my son, just about 2,000 miles or so, but it's all part of Asia. <laughs> And I've been waiting to say this. The country that they are going to build, you need to hear this now, brother. You've got to really focus. The best part about going to the country you're going to, they are great cricket players. <laughs> and, Bill, tomorrow you need to come to my house. I'm going to teach you what cricket is because you will never reach those people <laughs> if you don't know what it is to feel that silly mid on or backward forward leg if you don't know what leg before wicked is and caught behind the stumps, and if you don't know what a googly is, you're really in trouble. Now, I know you used to smoke googlies. I'm talking about playing. Ah, oh, tell you. Let's pray, with, let's pray with Bill and Christine. Lord Jesus, thank you for this most precious couple. Lord, I'm, I'm laying my hands on them and I'm voicing this prayer, but there's just a, an entire congregation that just loves them, their family, what they mean to us. And Lord, as they go, we join with others in commissioning them, that you would strengthen them and nurture them, that you would bless them, give them every opportunity in a faraway place to live out and to share the gospel, this gospel which is not complicated, and give them fruit for their labor. Help them, Lord, with their homesickness and with the gaps in their lives. And when they find themselves just missing some of the things that we love so much, bless their family who send them off. For Dr. Bill and Miss Glenda and the whole family together, Lord, just Keep your hand upon all of them, and may your wonderful grace shine through them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
God bless you. God bless you. See you in a minute. All right, whoa, one more thing. I've got to say this, one more thing. Two things. Hold on. Come back. Two things. Number one, I cannot tell you what a joy it is to have with us today. Kent and Cheryl Holt are with us today. Let's give them a big hand. They write you on the front. <laughs> and their two boys, Isaac and Aaron, I cannot imagine how much these guys have grown. Now, I've seen quite a bit of Isaac, but Aaron has got up to one of those young men that stood next to me last week. He looks like he's about six foot nine or something like that. And uh, Kent and Cheryl, boy, we love you guys. And there's going to be a lot of people want to shake your hand in a minute. So don't skadoodle out here, whatever you do. And we just welcome you. Secondly, many of you gave last week uh, to the special offering that the deacons take for our maintenance staff and janitorial staff. Every year, folks, we receive a retiring offering. And then we just take whatever's given and we divide it among all these very precious people who clean up after us, fetch and carry, move stuff around, and they are unbelievably precious. If you haven't had an opportunity to do that, you might have done so last week, but if you hadn't, uh, the deacons have asked me again this week. There will be plates, men stand, just drop a gift uh, in, in, in the offering plate, and God bless you as you do. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for Christmas. It's not complicated, and we know that to be true. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you ready to give your heart to Jesus? You know, I believe you are. God has been speaking to you, hasn't He? Why don't you pray this prayer with me right now? Dear God, I know that Jesus died for me on a cross. He's the Christ of Christmas. I know that He loves me and He gave His life for me. I repent of my sin and confess that sin to you. And by faith, I receive you into my heart in Jesus' name. Well, my friend, you see that number on the television screen? You've been looking at it right throughout this worship service. I want you to call me. Write it down, open 24-7. Don't give up. I've got a lot of friends waiting to connect with you. I really want to connect with you, and I want to congratulate you and get alongside of you. Welcome to the family of God. Oh, by the way, don't leave, because I'll be back in just a minute. This Christmas, we want to give you a gift to help you focus your heart and mind on Jesus Christ and the wonderful Christmas message the whole year through. As you give to help the broadcast of the encouraging word this Christmas, you'll receive a very special gift. God's Wisdom for Today is a brand new devotional written by several pastors and Christian leaders, including our own Dr. Wilton. Request God's Wisdom for Today, as well as a bonus sermon by Dr. Wilton, Has the Time Come, as you give generously today. I'm holding in my hand here one of the most incredible devotionals. This is 52 weeks of amazing devotionals from God's Word by a whole bunch of us ministers. I know these guys all across the country. I'm partnered in. I've done a devotional in this devotional book. I want you to have a copy. Here's what I'm going to do, okay? For any gift of any amount this year, I'm going to send you a gift of this my personal gift to you just to say thank you. Love God's Word. The encouraging Word is about God's Word. That's why we call it the encouraging Word. It's God's Word. And then when you put on top of that this incredible $100,000 matching gift that a friend has made available to the Encouraging Word broadcast ministry, just think about what God can do through you and me. Every dime you give before the end of this year will be doubled. And I want to thank you for that. That's what a matching gift is. And I'm telling you, God is going to provide the needs for this ministry so that we can go out to more places, be more effective. And here's the bottom line. You ready for this? So we can reach more people for Christ. Now that's a deal. Please be generous during this holiday season and see your gift doubled in impact to encourage our ministry together now and in the new year. 
For more information about this exciting opportunity, write to us at Post Office Box 2110, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304, or call us toll-free at 866-899-WORD, or visit us online at theencouragingword.org. Thank you so much for your continued support of The Encouraging Word. Oh, I'm back again. You know, Christmas is a wonderful time. I, I don't know about you, but I've been trying to buy gifts for five grandsons. Can you imagine that? And I tell you, gifts, you know, they're wonderful to give, but they cost, don't they? I want to give you something absolutely free. I want to send to you the Daily Encouraging Word Bible Guide. This is something I've prepared for you. We send these out all across our nation gives a word from God's Word that you can hide in your heart, you can hold your heart, daily readings, little word from me. I promise you this will be a blessing. You can call that number on the television screen. I'm going to send you this free of charge just to ask. Call us, write to us, email us. Do whatever it takes. Just let me know because I want to give you a free gift this Christmas, the Daily Encouraging Word Bible Guide. Call us, let us know. I just love you. Can't wait to see you again next week. How do you get to the North Pole? Yes. A train, maybe a plane. Well, did you just go north? You just go north? Yes. Take the Polar Express. The Polar Express, eh? That will get you there real quickly, wouldn't it? Okay, well, where is the North Pole? Where's the North Pole? Yes. North? Ah, the North. That's very clever. So who lives at the North Pole? Yes. Santa. Santa lives at the North Pole. Okay, where do you think Santa Claus goes on vacation? Yes. The beach. The beach! (laughs) Why does he go to the beach? Because it's always cold in the north. <laughs> Which beach would he go to? Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. And what if he got there and the sleigh got stuck in the sand? He would probably just have to push it. He would have to push it, wouldn't he? And what if he couldn't get out of the sand? He would probably be stuck. He'd be stuck. And then what would happen to all our presents? They wouldn't come to our houses. How old do you think Santa Claus is? Uh, 32. No. 199? Hey, you stole it. I thought it was 99. You also thought it was 99? And how do you know that he's old? Because he has a beard. Oh, he has a beard. So how long do you think his beard is? Um, about that, that large. That large. All right, and if he was just six? Uh, um, none. 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 How much does your Christmas stocking weigh? Yes. 30 oh. pounds. 30 pounds? Why does it weigh 30 pounds? Because you get lots of stuff in there. Lots of stuff. What kind of stuff do you get in there? Candy. Candy? What is the greatest thing you would want in your Christmas stocking? A toys. Toys? What kind of toys? Like girl toys and babies and baby toys. Baby toys? <laughs> Nail polish? What do you do with nail polish? I paint my, t- my dad's toenails. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You paint your daddy's toenails? <laughs> I need to talk to your daddy. If you were a Christmas tree, would you like to have a star on top of your head or would you like to have an angel on top of your head? Um, yes. An angel. An angel? Why? An angel. Because an angel is everywhere with you, and if it's on top of your head, it, it would watch over you on top of your head wherever we go. It would follow us. Yes. Angel. An angel. Now, why would you like to be an angel? Um, because they can fly. 
Because you can fly. Oh, so that's what angels do. They fly. Isn't that great? And what's so special about angels and Christmas? Yes. Because um, the angel told Mary and Joseph that they were going to have Jesus. Oh, they did. They came to make an announcement. And I think that's what you were trying to say about having an angel on your head. Because it's all about the announcement about Jesus, isn't it? So what is so special about Jesus at Christmas? Yes. Is it his birthday? It's his birthday. It's his birthday. And what would you want to know about Jesus at Christmas? Yes. Um, he's special. Very special. Yes. How is it like to like be born in a manger, not in a hospital, the right thing? Oh, I think that's a great question, isn't it? And do you think Jesus will be able to tell us one day? Mm -hmm. I think so. When do you think that day will be that he can tell us that? When we get to heaven. I think when we get to heaven, <laughs> hey. When well, I get old. When you get old. Okay, here's like my... Like when I'm like you. When you're like me? No, <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Um, Am I old? No, no. no. I'm not. You're my grandma's age. You're not, you're not oh, I'm your grandma's age. My grandma's, okay. my grandma's like 60 or something. She's old. What? Huh? What? Your grandma. Our grandma is not old. She's our, not. Our great grandma is old, but not our grandma. So am I a great grandpa or a grandpa? A grandpa. I'm a grandpa, so you might I'm not be like old. 100 or something, grandpa. Oh, are you ever going to be old? Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. One day. So how, okay, here it is. You ready? So how old is old? Like really old, like, yeah. You? <laughs> what? <laughs> like me? Like a, a scale from like 60 Santa Claus? to 100. Like, Probably about like Santa Claus. 60 to 100, but now that's old. Mm -hmm. About 1,050. So... Are you saying that I could be like Santa? Yep, yep. Maybe like probably, but you're not right now. But probably like when you eat a lot of cookies, you might get fat like Santa. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think he drinks milk? Yeah. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> but of course, now Santa. If Santa is old, what happens when I don't know how to drive a sleigh? When you get old, you're very wise because you've been on the earth for a long time. Oh. So you would probably know how to drive the sleigh. Oh, thank you. So I qualify to be Santa. Yes. I love that because I love you. You want to be Santa? You <laughs> <laughs> would get to deliver all the presents. He would be fat. Would. <laughs> Am I fat? No. no. You look kind of skinny. I do? Yeah. So do you have to be fat to be Santa? Yes. No. Yes. yes. You have to be chubby like Grandma Moses. No. What? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. 